In this episode, we discuss overhead pressing. I thought it was all about the bench. Welcome to episode 24 of Ask the LJs. I'm Luke. I'm Lawrence. We didn't do that last we time. We didn't do that last time. And add us on the snap. If Mitch has done his job right, there should be a massive snap code up there on, yeah. on, the, on the green screen. It's going to stay there throughout. So uh, what, Apart from one bit where we're going to put the question up there. Yeah. Because yeah. we yeah, we got to play around with so it. So how you so, can add us on Snapchat, you can just get your phone out if you're watching it on the desktop, get it up, press your thumb on it, it will add us. You can take a screenshot if you're watching this on your phone, go to Snapchat, add friends, add by snap code, Click on the picture, and then we're f we're Snapchat friends. Probably friends. Won't, probably won't follow you back though. But Ooh. you never know. Ooh. Give me a reason. Cold. So hard. So today's <coughs> question comes from our uh, SBS Academy scholarship winner from Dan Ander. Don't judge me on my accent. <laughs> Always. Christopher great. Watts. Uh, so he asked training question, guys. Mitch is going to put it up there. So I don't have to hold my phone and hit Mitch Spence ages focusing the thing. <laughs> Any secret ninja programming secrets of busting through a plateau with strict overhead pressing? So that's from there, up there. Strict. No jerking. No, no pushing. Crazy, weird stuff. Nothing like that. I used to suck at squatting, so I did more squats and my squat went up. I used to suck at benching, so I did more benching and it went up. I applied this to my overhead press and it's failing to provide the goods. It's got no goods. Go on, John, I'll let you so, take this one first. Overhead pressing. Um, yeah, my overhead press is terrible as well. It's, yeah, it's just a horrible lift. Um, so, <laughs> the thing to bear in mind with the strict overhead press um, is basically Again, similar to what I alluded to last uh, episode with the, the weight increments, is that any increase in weight that you do uh, or that you add to your overhead press is going to be a much larger um, percentage of your max than with a lot of your other lifts. And a lot of lifters don't necessarily see that as objectively as they could. Um, they think, oh, my deadlift has gone up by 10, 20 kilos this, uh, over the past kind of 8, 12 weeks. My overhead press has only gone up by like five. That sucks. But then as a percentage of what that max is, you're probably doing about the same. Um, so how to, you know, once you've addressed that issue, how to make progress on it is the same as any other lift really. But you've got to bear in mind, similar to when you are programming for both squats and deadlifts, when you're programming for both bench press variations and overhead press variations, you, you've got to be aware that your shoulders and your triceps are very, very heavily involved in both lifts. So it's a good idea to probably prioritize one or the other. You can split the work pretty evenly between the two, um, but you may not make as much progress on one. So it's, you know, if you want to feel like, if you, if you need to feel like you're progressing at a very fast rate all the time, it's probably best to prioritize one because you can progress really far quickly on your bench then switch to overhead press for a bit and switch back to bench, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's a good idea to take bench volume down, probably. Um, and if you are going to bench, I would probably stick to close grip variations or variations that are going to decrease the weight that you're lifting, like the actual amount of kilos on the bar, purely so that you aren't putting as, again, you're not putting as much volume through the joints that are also being used quite heavily for overhead press variations. And close grip's also going to help um, anterior deltoid and tricep develop more than um, just a regular bench press will. So with regards to kind of some more detail on that, look at overhead pressing kind of two, three times a week a variety of rep ranges, making sure you're getting some, some higher rep work in, but also some heavier work in there as well. As well. Maybe some technique type work. Uh, a lot of people 
struggle with max overhead pressing because their technique at heavier weights isn't so good. So having a session or two where you really, really focus on uh, the technique involved for maximally heavy strict overhead pressing is probably going to um, be a really you know, important, a really good use of your time. Um, so you, like any lift, you've got kind of three main components. You've got the technique required to complete the lift. Um, are your muscles big enough to um, become strong enough? And then do you have the strength to press that weight overhead? So you've got to kind of attack it from all three of those angles, really. So yeah, that's that's my ninja programming secrets for Chris. My thing, Chris, is how many people have said how much you overhead press? <laughs> it's what you bench, bro. Yeah. So again, it's like someone said people got to take into account a five kg on overhead press mm -hmm. is like a maybe ten. 15 kg maybe on bench or a bit less so you just you've got to take into account that yeah. the muscle groups used are smaller muscle groups therefore they're never ever going to be able to produce the same amount it's the thing strength. if you have a 100 kilo overhead press which is pretty strong yeah and a 200 kilo squat which is pretty strong again this just makes the numbers easier um a 10 percent increase in both is a 10 kilo increase on your overhead press and a 20 kilo increase in your squat so mm -hmm. why worry as you said, understand that first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And it's all go it always goes down to if you really want to be good at a certain lift, then you you need to be specific with that training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it might not be that you're you don't have the strength to perform the weight you want to perform. It might just be that you've not performed that skill enough to be able to, as Lawrence said, the technique wise to your strength. And you know this with like big like people would say relatively new lifters as well. Mm -hmm. When they first, when I work in the gym, and someone first do like a dumbbell a bench press, because it's a new skill to them, and again they've got a, a weight to control with both hands. When they first start off, it might be only like a man say doing 14 kg dumbbell bench press, mm. and then they look like spaghetti. The first set looks spaghetti, second set looks linguine, and uh, <laughs> the third set looks ravioli. I don't know, do you like it? but again. <laughs> It's more, it's more, it's more like the <laughs> shape's strong, do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, yeah, same yeah place. I get you. So it could just be that you've not really done overhead pressing as much. Mm. But seriously, you, you, again, like Lawrence said, uh, an exercise is an exercise, muscles are muscles. Mm. Uh, maybe do some, if you've got like a sticking point, maybe doing some pin presses. Yeah, maybe. Just to help with that, if you just need to lock out. Just different variations of it, mm. um, different repetition ranges, different... Uh, loads etc based on the reps and just understand that you're not going to be able to progress as That's quick perfect. at the same rate as you would maybe on a bench press or you know strict I mean? pressing is very very hard to miss groove as well um, compared to a lot of the other lifts because of y you, your, your wrist and your elbows and the bar need to be pretty much directly under the centre of gravity like at all times and the moment it drifts away from you it makes it a lot harder. Well, look at that. It just yes. it could be a factor that anatomically, yeah, he's not going to be able to be in a position mm. where it's going to give him maximum efficiency yeah. to be able to generate the strength that he does have, mm. because biomechanically he's not in an optimal position. It's also why you're overhead pressing as well. If you are overhead pressing for the proficiency at Olympic lifting, then by all means, crack on. Um, it's kind of a pretty important part. But if you're overhead pressing for the sake of increasing your bench press, which is a debatable issue, or just for general shoulder hypertrophy, then maybe pick dumbbell pressing variations that you know don't discourage you the same as a barbell overhead press would in terms of feeling like you're not progressing as much. Use them as a much more of an accessory lift and just get some volume in through the shoulders. Stick to, um, if you're using it to develop your bench press, you stick with horizontal or incline pressing variations maybe. Um, which if your your bench is strong and your overhead press is relatively weak, I, it's probably a case that bringing your overhead press up won't do a huge amount to your bench press because your bench press has already got into a relatively strong position 
without a very strong overhead press. So whilst improving your um, overhead press may help to a degree, it's probably not going to be as good as just Benji. continuing to focus on horizontal and incline pressing variations and strengthening that movement pattern. So, yeah. There you go. That's Watts. my thoughts. Enjoy that. Enjoy. Speak to you soon.